I'm Dr. Anthony Harper with the Intermountain Christian News here in Twin Falls, Idaho. There's been a, a lot of discussion here in Idaho in general about uh, refugee concerns, and there have been a lot of refugees coming to Idaho. Actually, the, the, the number since 1975, uh, I had a quote of 21,000 refugees that have come into Idaho since that point. But here in Twin Falls, we've had uh, concerns about, uh, a lot of people have had concerns about the refugee population here, and the problems have occurred here, and Lacey and Ken Lee will be here, are here to share their experience, a very sad experience, what has happened. And uh, Lacey, uh, we were <clears throat> talking about what happened to your daughter. And your family has gone through a lot. And uh, your daughter was uh, abused uh, by some other refugee boys. Yes. And uh, <clears throat> this has been in the news. Uh, several news agencies have talked about this problem. And, uh, but uh, the concern is, is how this is affecting your daughter. How is your daughter right now? Uh, handling all this, you know, this like a post-traumatic uh, situation. So, how is your daughter? Well, she was recently diagnosed with PTSD. Um, she is healing slowly from this. Um, right after what had happened to her, she would constantly go and hide um, in closets because um, that's where she felt safe. Mm -hmm. And now, still till this day, even when she's at school or when we're at the store and she sees refugee children, um, boys, men or boys, she gets scared and she says, um, Mommy, I'm scared of those boys. She has told me quite a few times. Um, and she says that they're, those kids are bad boys. And she would um, go through situations where she would have bad dreams, night terrors, wetting the bed. Mm -hmm. um, she still does sometimes have bad dreams, but when that happens, we just pray with her and put her back to sleep. But she's just slowly healing. It's going to be a long process for her. It's not going to just happen overnight. No, it's a very, it's a very painful thing, and it takes time to get through. And want to let everyone know that it's it's not uh, refugees that uh, are hurting other people, but uh, people here, citizens of the U.S., are hurting each other as well. Uh, there have been uh, citizens here raping other citizens and, and killing other citizens. So it's it's uh, we we don't want people to think it's just a, a refugee problem, but this is what happens to you with certain individuals, some bad individuals that abused your daughter and uh, so uh, I would encourage people to uh, listening to watching this to pray for Lacey and Kelly and especially for your daughter and all that you've gone through and how has this impacted you physically you've been diagnosed recently with uh, a medical issue too that um, so. I was diagnosed with MS recently um, and PTSD as well um, it's just been really hard on me, my family, um, and Candley. It's a really hard um, thing to talk about with a lot of people. Um, so it is very difficult. Yes. And that's why I ask people to pray for you mm -hmm. and Candley, your daughter, and uh, all those involved with this. And. Uh, very emotional issue here in the U.S., as you know. Mm -hmm. President Trump has talked about uh, this immigration issue a lot. Concerned about national security, uh, the type of people that we let into our nation. And there's a lot to deal with here. And uh, America has a moral problem. I think a lot of Christian leaders would agree. Mm -hmm. Here, we, America is in trouble, seriously, on several fronts. Um, a lot of people that don't respect God in our nation. And uh, we need a miracle you know, here in America, a lot of healing. But, uh, I agree. And uh, so, Lacey, um, may God bless you with his healing touch. Thank you. That the great physician Jesus will touch you. 
and restore your health and your daughter. Uh, and um, it takes time to get through this. And uh, you need to have a good support system, a good, uh, good helpful church, and, and all that. And, and I've asked people to pray for you. And candidly, you've witnessed uh, some of this. Yeah, and, uh, I was there the so whole time. You were there for the whole time, as you mentioned earlier that you, uh, there was a video that was taken. Mm -hmm. I seen the video, and then I was harassed afterwards by their older siblings, and they were all in packs of people, like not gangs per se, but multiples. And they would drive past late at night if I was outside. Um, they would say, we're going to get you, pointing to my bedroom window. And this had continued on for a couple of weeks after the incident. And I actually ended up moving out of state with my family. And um, now I'm back, which is I'm glad that I'm back because I'm here to help her, especially with her medical issues. And I think we really need each other in a sense. We both have pretty, you know, severe medical issues. and. Um, not only that, the depression and, you know, from the PTSD, the anxiety, and mm -hmm. it's just good support to have each other because we both go through the same, like, you know, type of situation. Very difficult situation. This it is. This, this, this incident, this, this happened approximately when? About not year. too long ago. A year ago. It was a little over, over a year. year. Um, it actually happened in June of 2016. 2016, okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we can't talk about what's happened on the outcome of this, what happened to these boys, but uh, at least uh, some, something's happened we, we don't know, but uh, I would invite people to pray for the boys. It's not easy to do, but uh, Jesus calls to pray for our uh, adversaries. Uh, I, I pray that they will come to know Jesus mm -hmm. as their Savior. Um, and uh, and and to pray, encourage to pray for everyone in this situation. Very difficult to deal with. A um, lot of uneasiness, and uh, you know, it's, it's so helpful to know that people will be praying for you. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it takes time. So, um, so what's what's next um, for you, Lacey, and, and your daughter? You've got ongoing. Uh, have to go through therapy. You know, um, this. Well, it's just a healing process. We just have one more court hearing, and um, that's coming up here soon, hopefully. And that's for restitution for all of the everything that they've caused our family. Like when we had to move out of our apartment by our choice to be safe. Um, living in a hotel for about close to two months and out-of-pocket expenses and mm -hmm. we were just thankful to have the help from a local group called We The People to be there for us and that's about it. Yeah, um, you know, there's a lot of support that you need and uh, I know it's uh, really affected you uh, Financially, you've gone through a lot of difficult times. You mentioned about going, having to be out of state. I did. I you know, for your for your own safety, has been concerns for any further you know, safety issues for you, Lacey, in your family as a result of talking about this. Any concerns? Right now, I believe we're safe where we're at. Mm -hmm. um, our safety is good. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. It's quiet and where we are. We don't have to worry about it anymore. We are not amazing. where we were. Let's just say mm -hmm. that. Stay off that yes. Line. But it took a while to find an actual place to live because um, everywhere where my family looked to, to rent, um, the owner would ask us, well, why are you moving? And I would have to tell them, our story because it's the truth. I can't just say, well, we're moving just because we want to. Um, we're moving because of what happened to my daughter. Mm -hmm. And then we would get denied that that house and then another house and another house. And then it took a while to find a house, but we were very grateful from a very close friend of mine, um, Lenita. She had a, her, one of her close friends had a house available. That wasn't quite finished right away, but we were able to move in. 
And so we were thankful, very thankful for that. Well, it is, the, you know, there's a lot to deal with here. It is, a, like I said, you take time, but with God's help, you will get through this. Mm-hmm. And uh, I pray for a good outcome here in the court system that they will do the right thing. A lot of people don't trust the court system very well. But uh, hopefully this case uh, encourage people to pray uh, for the, those involved and, and God's justice will occur. And um, so... But the most important is that healing that you need for your daughter mm-hmm. and that she will have a, uh, a great life, that she will have a restored life and be able to be of help to others that are hurting. Yes. And I know that God often has saves people some bad, very bad situations and, and helps them to help others that are hurting in that area. Yes, I agree. So um, your daughter has some special needs. And she's she she has some challenges here. Yeah, she's not mentally challenged. She's just developmentally delayed when it comes to learning. So okay. she's just itty bitty. She was a dream. Oh, very. So she really has developmental delay, which learning disabilities. So how's her communication at this point? Well, she has opened up to one of her close friends and has actually told her what had happened to her, which I didn't think Jayla would tell anybody. But she did um, tell her friend, which was okay because I'm really close to her mother and her mother knew it was fine. And she helped Jayla through it because she was there. And so. Yeah, may God help her in communication to talk about these things. And she, she, uh, she's getting help with learning how to express herself yes. and to deal with that. She's yeah. a completely different little girl. She likes to be a love she, now. Yeah. She's, she's quiet, which is very odd for Jayla. Jayla is usually, you know, spunky, energetic, energetic, ready to go, like cheerleader steps. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, I was gone for a year, and now that I'm back, and... I just sit her, I watch her come home from school and she'll go through brother a little bit, but then you can just see that she just sits around the couch and she's to herself, she's just quiet and that's that's not Jayla. Yeah. That's not the Jayla that I've known since she was a baby, you know, it's oh, okay. She is getting better though. It is getting better. Yeah. She's learned to um, protect herself, like against like her brother. Um so I think she's gotten stronger in that way. She knows that nobody needs to touch her or she won't let anybody, so. Even yelling, yeah. she stands her ground. Yeah. Okay, so we pray for courage for, for her. Yes. And, uh, and uh, help her in all of her, all these needs and for healing for you and for candy and that you will get all the help you need here, all the support and your family will be restored. Yes. Um, so, anything else finally, Candidate, that you would like to share with our listeners? Well, yeah, one thing is, that, like you had said prior, it's not just the refugees that's the problem. Right. It's not, it's, you know, people in our community, it could be your neighbor, for instance. Yeah. Um, I was actually sexually assaulted in July of 2017, a couple months ago, in the Depot Grill in Twin Falls parking lot at 2.30 in the morning. Um, which is crazy because I've been going to that restaurant since I was a little girl with my, you know, with my parents. And it was unexpected. I was with my friends. My friend had took off before me and he jumped out of his vehicle and attacked me. Yeah, so it can happen literally anywhere and to anybody, any age, any race, any religion, it can happen. You just never know how safe they're going to be. Anything can happen. So... And, and, and from this, uh, a lot of parents <clears throat> need to um, be definitely on, on guard and know what, what's happening around. I mean, you just never know. When you think you feel safe and you feel you, safe. you're not, you just you just never know what can happen. Yeah, and, and, and shopping malls, mm-hmm. you know, uh, kids are very quick and they can get out of your control. They, yeah, anytime. And, uh, so we, we want, uh, you know, parents to be able to have a for safety with their children, no matter where they're at. And uh, so I pray for God's protection over uh, the children and uh, and for a move of God in America that 
this will be a better place to live. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, America needs a lot of help. There's a moral problem in America, a big, big problem. And families have been affected, so many upset families, so many confused families, hurting families. And without God, there is no hope. Mm -hmm. So Church. specifically, uh, Jesus is the only healer that we can have, the, the great physician. Yeah. And uh, so I thank you for sharing with me. And we'll we can do some update later about you know how things are developing. And uh, you know I, I'm once again um, I'm Dr. Anthony Harper here to talk about this very crucial issue that is is happening uh, not only here in Twin Falls, Idaho, but throughout the nation. There's a lot of families are hurting, children are hurting that have been abused by others. Uh, it can be uh, it, it could be a refugee issue, uh, a, an offender. It could be anyone in our country. And I invite everyone to pray about this problem, this moral problem that we have in America. We need to be a nation that honors God and uh, will accept Him and, and people that seek Him for direction in America to pray for America that's in trouble. And, uh, and there's so much to deal with in a short amount of time. We need serious prayer and repentance in America. People praying for each other and, and trusting in Jesus to help us through this very difficult time. So, Amen. thank you for sharing. Yes. Amen. We'll be able to hopefully help a lot of people. Yes.